Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, this is a, an evening to reflect on the first year of the medical school, the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. Uh, for those of you who have, I have not had an opportunity to greet in the last few minutes, uh, I am the president of Oakland University and I welcome you to tonight. I'd like to recognize some important people for Oakland University who work with me to ensure the future of the university is stable and viable. I'd like to introduce board members who are here tonight. First, I'd like to introduce Henry Baskin, who is chair of the Board of Trustees. Henry, would you stand to be recognized? <laughs> Monica Emerson, a member of the board. Richard Rick Flynn, would you please stand and be recognized, member of the board. <laughs> Michael Kramer, who is the vice chair of the board. Michael, thank you. And Mark Schlussel. Mark, would you stand, member of the trustees. You know, uh, the School of Medicine is a source of great pride for our colleagues, alums, and friends. And we're excited to be in a partnership with Beaumont Hospitals. The efforts of both organizations to put this together has been remarkable. We developed a shared vision and mission for the school. We hired a founding dean. We secured preliminary accreditation developed a curriculum, and we hired a great deal of talent in faculty and staff for the school, as well as prepare classrooms, laboratories, and residencies. Truly remarkable as we move forward with this school. Most of you know our charter class began last fall. We had 50 students. And it is amazing because 70% of those students came from Michigan and the rest from eight states outside of Michigan. Also, we were able to attract faculty from five states outside of Michigan. You may know this fall, we're going to admit 75. Then the next year, it will be 100. And then the following year, 125. That will be the plateau and steady state for this school. I am convinced that this School of Medicine will play a key role in the ongoing challenge to improve access to health care in Michigan. And I'm also convinced it will play a key role in addressing the physician shortage that's projected in the state of Michigan. And you may know the amount of physicians shortage predicted is about 4,000 in the next 10 years. Also, it's important to note the economic impact of this school is clearly noteworthy. But I can tell you we cannot do this alone. The support of the community is critical to ensuring that we achieve the goals of this school as we move through the next five years of its development. I'm going to deviate from the script just a minute, and I'm going to call up someone who has been instrumental in helping us develop this school, and he's going to deliver a special message from the child of the founder of Oakland University and it's Provost Verinder Modgel. Verinder, would you come up, please? Thank you, President Rossi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is, to me, one of uh, the milestone event for me to receive a letter from the son of Matilda 
Dodge Wilson. You know, Matilda was widow of John Dodge, and then she married Mr. Wilson. Matilda and Alfred Wilson donated their land and the home to start Oakland University. And this is the surviving son. He's 83 years old. And Richard Wilson, let me, uh, it's a long letter, but I'll only quote what is relevant to us this evening. He says, please, if the opportunity arises, please inform the class, the medical school class, how much pride my parents, Matilda and Alfred, will have felt, and how much pride that all of the living members of Wilson Dodge family feel about the initial class or what will be one of the premier medical schools in the country, Richard Wilson. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Brenda, thank you very much. You know, we're truly, truly, truly honored and very pleased to enter into a partnership with Beaumont Hospital. And Beaumont, of course, is one of the nation's leading hospitals. And it is clearly one of the largest community-based academic health centers. This partnership has been extremely productive and rewarding. And it is truly my pleasure now to introduce the CEO of Beaumont Hospitals, Jean Michalski. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to introduce and welcome our, our board of directors as well, and I'll ask you to hold your applause until they're all introduced. Uh, with us tonight, uh, Jim Rosenthal. Please stand. Uh, come on, stand up, guys. <laughs> Evan Weiner. Jeff Hockman, who's in charge of our foundation as well. Barbara Mahone. Chris Blake. And uh, Gail Colwell is here as well. So would you please help me recognize these wonderful leaders? Yeah. Oh, and John Hartwick. Did I get you, John? Okay. Uh, we also have several of our trustees here. We have about 100 trustees on our uh, uh, trustee board that are community members and represent Beaumont so very well in the work that they do in our committees and out in the community. And if I could just ask all of our trustees to stand and be recognized as well, I'd appreciate it. Would you stand and be recognized, please? Thank you. Uh, before I begin my formal remarks, Gary and I would like to thank those here tonight who are serving as part of our host committee. You may have seen us getting our pictures taken with them uh, this evening. And I'd, li I'd like to ask that they uh, stand and be recognized. And if you could hold your applause until we've named them all, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we'll begin with Mary and Jonathan Aaron. Maggie. Uh, Alice, Sherry and David Cotton, Dr. David Cotton, uh, Deborah and John Erb, down here, Zena and Michael Kramer, Barbara Mahone, there she is, Rhonda and Gary Rann are with us this evening, Nancy and Bob Shostak, Patty Finnegan and Steve Scharf are here. Thanks for holding me up. <laughs> and the Honorable Deborah Tyner and Richard Herman are here. And uh, won't you please join me and recognize these folks for their leadership. <laughs> As many of you know, uh, Beaumont has a 50-year history of uh, training medical students. And currently, we have over 700 students on our campus on any given day. Additionally, there are over 400 residents and fellows in training in 37 specialties. And these folks come from not only the local community, they come from the national and even the international community. What's unique about Beaumont uh, and Oakland University in the School of Medicine training program is that we offer the opportunity to these students to be trained in a single integrated system. That's not like every other medical school, by the way. Many of the other medical schools have to place their students in multiple locations and try to integrate it on the back end. This is truly unique. So, and, and the other thing that's unique, we're, we're training these students, and maybe Bob Fulberger will talk about this a little bit later, in the complete process of care, your entire experience. 
And what's also unique is we have a unified electronic health record. Nobody else has these tools to train the students. So for example, you may have noticed I have an orthopedic problem. I'm walking around with a cane the site, right? So I will prep for the surgery, have the surgery, recover, rehabilitate, and have home care. All that will be funneled into a single health care record that everybody will be able to look at and learn from. And uh, yeah, I do have a Beaumont doctor. <laughs> so um, our students will learn this entire process, not by body systems, not by skeletal system or digestive system or nervous system. They're gonna learn it by disease type. So when they study the heart, they're gonna study the anatomy, the physiology, and uh, everything about the innervation and so forth of the heart. They'll look at it completely different, the way you seek care and the way doctors deliver care. So these students are already working in our hospitals, in our doctor's offices, and soon they'll have the experience working in, in our outpatient centers, in home care, our nursing homes, and so forth. And while the expertise of Beaumont and Oakland are impressive, one, one key additional ingredient that we need to incorporate in this magnificent, meaningful mission that we're undertaking are you, the community. Community members who are involved and need to be more involved and support this school. Tonight it's our hope that as you come to know more about the unique character of this medical school and its highly accomplished, highly talented faculty and students, that you'll consider becoming even more invested in this grand venture with us. So as you enjoy your dinner this evening, you'll notice that each table includes at least one faculty member and one student, and uh, they'll have a chance to share with you their experiences this first year, which have been remarkable. And they'll help you learn more about this model of teaching and learning that will help us create a healthier community. So on, be uh, on behalf of the Beaumont Health System, I thank you for coming. I hope you find that tonight's program captures not only your interest, but your imagination in the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. Thank you very much. Please enjoy your dinner and conversation. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I hope that you are enjoying the dinner and enjoying meeting our students. I'm Bob Fulberg. I have the privilege of uh, a really fabulous job. I'm the founding dean of the medical school, which means I get to really recruit a team and put it in motion, and they do all the, all the really neat stuff. You know, a lot of medical schools are about research, and that's important. A lot of medical schools are about so many different things. But in the end, it says School of Medicine on the door. And so it's really, in the end, about students. Um, I wish you could meet every one of them. Uh, there are about 15 to 16 of them here this evening. They're scattered throughout the room. Uh, since you can't meet every one of them, uh, we're going to ask that you pay some careful attention to the elected president of our charter class, Chris Yeager. Chris? Thank you, Dean Fulberg. I would first like to thank Mr. Michalski, President Russi, Oakland University, the Beaumont Health System, and the prominent members of the community in the audience tonight for allowing me to speak with you. My name is Chris Yeager, and I am proud to say that I'm one of the students in the charter class at OUWB. I am speaking to you tonight on behalf of this extraordinary class as the founding president of the recently established medical student government. It is my intent in this talk to give each of you an insider's look into the first year experience at our school. For those of you who are waiting to hear a truly eloquent speech that will knock your socks off, feel free to daze off and wake up right before the next talk by Dean Fulbert. <laughs> I must say, he is quite the speaker and an even greater dean, physician, teacher, and mentor. So I am often asked, and many of you may be asked this question to yourself right now, what makes Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine different from other medical schools besides its extraordinarily long name? <laughs> <laughs> For starters, admissions works differently here. Traditionally, superior scores are held in higher regard than experiences, personality, leadership, compassion, and dedication. Yet the OUWB admissions team takes every aspect of one's application seriously 
and admits the candidate that best demonstrates the characteristics of a doctor they want treating their family in a process called holistic review. From the very moment I stepped into class on the first day back in August, which seems like a long time ago, the diversity, breadth of experience, intellect, and drive of the students in this class astounded me. And I attribute that astonishment directly to the holistic review process. The charter class is motivated from day one to get this school off the ground and work hard to establish a cultural precedent based on inclusiveness and collaboration. We are a family that learns together, plays together, laughs together, and occasionally cries together. It didn't matter if you were a resident of Oakland County, Michigan or Oakland County, California, you are immediately part of the closest family known to medicine. Please let me share with you some of the highlights of this class prior to beginning medical school. The 50 of us speak 10 different languages besides English. We are artists, comedians, musicians, dancers, all American football players, teachers, and engineers, just to name a few. We come from everywhere between California and New Jersey, but our global awareness and travel experience is admirable. And yet with all the nice stuff to say about our roundedness, we are a smart class on paper relative to other medical schools. <laughs> Just the 15 students dispersed throughout the audience tonight received acceptances from Wayne State, Michigan State, Michigan, Toledo, Cincinnati, Medical College of Wisconsin, and New York Medical College, just to name a few. The next question one might ask is, why did they come here? To a new medical school in the suburbs of Metro Detroit with no residency match rate and a higher than average tuition. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure I mentioned that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the answer to that question is complicated. There are a number of reasons why one might come to the school over others. Please let me try to explain some of those reasons to you now. The first reason to come to OEWB would be that teaching medical students here is somewhat of an art. Basic science professors are master educators. Clinical faculty are experts in their fields. And the instructional design is novel. The curriculum at OEWB is something to note, for its philosophy and vision is truly revolutionary. To put it simply, and to allow Dean Fulber to better articulate this point, our curriculum takes the best of other medical schools and adds its own flavor with the intent that students become competent, compassionate physicians. To best demonstrate this point, I will walk you through two of my favorite days of the week, Tuesdays and Fridays. For the sake of the story, pretend you are one of the medical students studying cardiology. It's not that bad. <laughs> On Tuesdays, you walk into class and are greeted by an esteemed Beaumont cardiologist who is not only an expert in the field, but is an experienced educator. The three hours worth of morning lecture spent studying clinical cases, practicing diagnostic skills, and wondering how you're going to get the 200 anatomy terms stuck in your head by the afternoon, let alone the test. After a two-hour lunch break to regain your confidence that you lost in the morning, you head over to the anatomy lab. Suddenly the 2D images on the PowerPoint become 3D as you dissect your cadaver's heart and peer into its chambers. Yet for some reason you just can't find the AV node and none of your teammates seem to know either. For those of you who don't know the AV node, it's part of the electrical system in the heart. Yeah. <laughs> as if it were a divine gift, a team of cardiologists walk in the door and are eager to explain everything to you until it is ingrained in your head. You walk out of the lab knowing that at the very least, you know you won't screw up anatomy come test time. Following the anatomy session, you head back over to the lecture hall and find the once illuminated room darkened. It's radiology time. <laughs> Every physician needs to learn how to interpret a radiograph, so why not start as a first year medical student? Come Friday, your job is to take the material of the week and apply it to a comprehensive case study with your team of four other medical students and a cardiologist. You must interpret the history, physical exam, and test results and come up with a plan to tackle your differential diagnosis. By the way, all of this is happening in the midst of a Beaumont cardiologist. You treat the mock patient. Sometimes they live, sometimes they don't. But at the very least, you go into the weekend knowing you applied your knowledge and feel more confident with the material. For those of you who aren't familiar with other curriculum setups, I assure you, this model, based on teamwork and early exposure to clinical medicine, 
is absolutely novel compared to other medical schools, even those within this state. At one point in our cardiovascular unit, there were 11 cardiologists in the lecture hall, all participating in the case discussion. A lot of us are saying to ourselves, let's just hope Bumma didn't have many heart attacks walk through the door at that time. <laughs> On top of the basic science courses, the curriculum sets aside courses in ethics, epidemiology, preventative health care, clinical skills, capstone, and mental health that follow each medical student throughout all four years of their time here. I could talk for hours about each of these courses and how they make me a more skilled medical student. The students of the charter class are already fluent in taking a history, conducting a physical exam, giving vaccinations, performing a clinical research study, understanding the ethics behind a physician-patient relationship, and so much more. It is not a fluke. I am already noticing that I am progressing to a level of understanding in medicine that is superior to what other students get at different schools by this time. The novel curriculum is an ex excellent reason to choose to come to o OUWB. Another reason students come to OUWB is for what I like to call the Beaumont effect. It is a power fully grasped by the students who come from Oakland County and soon realized by the rest in just a short time after they come here. In growing up at 13 Mile in Woodward for all of my young life, being the son of an architect who designs hospitals for a living, and receiving care as a young boy in the Beaumont Emergency Room, which I will not tell you about, <laughs> I see Beaumont as a regional landmark. Beaumont has always embodied community outreach, quality care, research, innovation, and education. Yet now it is using its prominence as a tertiary delivery system to educate a select group of medical students they now call their own. It is such an honor to work alongside Beaumont physicians that this reason for coming to OUWB is more or less self-explanatory. The last reason for coming to OUWB is, that I will pass along to you tonight is hard to explain. It is our culture, our atmosphere, the air we breathe every day at school. Here you are not a number. On the contrary, every professor, administrator, and staffer knows who you are, even on interview day. Every student is, is assigned a Beaumont attending and resident who will serve as mentors for all four years of medical school. For those of you who like to doze off in class, some may be in the room, the fact that everybody knows who you are does not always prove to be beneficial. But for the vast majority, the close relationships fostered at this school contribute to a sense of family and camaraderie that often invades medical education, so often based on competition and individualism. As one student in the audience puts it, the atmosphere makes it a unique place to learn in an era in which medical teams and ability to work with others as a team is key to success. This ability to collaborate and work with others is best demonstrated by the accomplishments of the charter class thus far in the year. In just one year, this class has established 13 student organizations. OEWB boasts the highest percentage of student membership in the American Medical Association nationwide. The American Medical Women's Association won National Chapter of the Year in its first year of existence. This class has volunteered at numerous sites throughout Southeast Michigan. It even took 10 students, which is 20% of the class, to Nicaragua for a week-long medical mission trip. We play every intramural sport offered at Oakland University and are anxious to get next year's students in on the action. In essence, the culture at OUWB fosters consistent happiness and fuels the fire for personal growth. People love being here. It is no secret that scholarship and amenities that come as a result of generous donations are a key, play a key role in attracting quality students to an institution. OEWB is no exception. Some of my peers came to this school simply because our amenities were state of the art and it was financially feasible to attend with scholarship assistance. But today, I am here to proclaim to you, on behalf of the charter class, that OEWB has not only lived up to its expectations, but exceeded them on all fronts, thanks to the efforts of the people in the room. We are a special group of students who chose to partake in history and help this school move forward. Of course, we have experienced hurdles and hiccups 
that have made some days very difficult being part of a new medical school. But the combination of Oakland University, Beaumont Health System, OEWB administration, and the charter class has truly produced a product that will go down in history as a medical school that changed the way doctors learn. This school challenged the status quo and used its position in Oakland County, Michigan to set up something special for the students who attend, the surrounding community, and the patients who benefit at the tail end of the story. OUWB will make great doctors, period. Thank you for your continued support of our school, for your efforts have made my life and the life of my classmates a blessing. We hope that you believe in this school and its future as much as the charter class does. Thank you for your attention and please have a pleasant evening. That is a very hard act to follow. <laughs> I, well, I'm going to tell you why it's such a hard act to follow. Um, I deliberately did not screen Chris's notes. I had no idea what he was about to say. I have that degree of confidence of every of the students in our class, so I'm going to have to improvise and kind of build upon what Chris said, tell you a little bit about this school, and tell you how it got to be this way. Chris really focused it very, very well. Look, all medical schools teach the same thing. The art form is, is healthcare where we want it to be right now or should it look something a bit different? Are the physicians that we have exactly what we need or if they are, we should just keep on doing the same thing that we're doing right now. But when we listen really hard in the community, we say, you know, we just don't want physicians who are scientifically competent or even scientifically wonderful. We want them to be that plus compassionate, skilled communicators, engaged in the community. So that gets, how do you do that? How do you get from the conventional to that, which we've tried to create, and how did that all happen? So let me back up for a bit because I do have the privilege of putting this team together, where did this all come from? And it kind of came from a little piece of inspiration that I acquired along the way. Um, I'll give you the quote. The quote is, wonder rather than doubt is the source of knowledge. And that little piece of wisdom, I'll give you the author of it, it's a theologian, philosopher, and social activist, very active in the civil rights movement by the name of Abraham Joshua Heschel. That quote inspired about 20 years of research. I was a cancer researcher. And when I was doing cancer research, I had a choice of either making incremental findings, very safe, easy to get grants funded, just tweak a little bit of what exists. Uh, Dr. Diok, now I'm looking at him, we know how to write grants. And we decided not to do that. We, we, what's the point to that? Uh, the point is to get something novel, something different, to wonder what else could happen. So I will tell you that in 1999, on a September morning, I got a phone call at five in the morning from one of my colleagues in the lab, very, very excited, and he called up and he said, Bob, you know that paper we just published, the embargo is being broken, that means the press can talk about it. We were at the University of Iowa at the time. He said, it's on the front page of the Chicago Tribune, above the crease. Now, we have a publisher here tonight, so you know what that above the crease means. That's a big deal. And we were so excited, my gosh, this is a radical finding in cancer research. That lasted for about three months. Because by the end of three months, the editor of the journal who published that article regretted he had published it, and published an editorial saying he wasn't quite sure and then he published a piece, and he had the, the title of our, our article on it, and he's, he asked three questions. People asked three questions. They said, how convincing, how novel, and how significant? Now, they didn't let us publish a rebuttal to that article on the same issue, which is what they usually do in a scientific controversy. They let it, us publish the answer the month after. And we didn't even know what we were answering. We just told, you guys are in real big trouble. 
Now, that research had been based on 14 years of very careful laboratory work. And we wrote a piece that said, look, I know that this is kind of different and kind of radical, but here's the evidence that shows it's right. And then spent another eight years proving that it was right. That article that responded to that criticism, I went back last week and checked on it. It's been cited in the literature now nearly 500 times. So wonder rather than doubt is a source of knowledge. You know, when I was approached with the possibility of doing something really crazy, like walking away from research and walking away from the clinical practice of medicine to put together a new medical school, I started to ask, I wonder what would happen if we just took a fresh approach to medical education. And in the letter that I submitted in application for this position, it ends with the following. It said that uh, if you would give me the privilege of starting this school, I would strive to bring and my team would strive to bring a new paradigm for medical education that others would seek to emulate. That's how the letter ends. So the problem with this is, Bob, is it going to take 14 years to figure out if this is working? <laughs> and the answer is no, and you're beginning to see some of the evidence from what Chris told you. Let me give you a little bit more evidence to this. Holistic review. You know, we have a fabulous admissions dean who is here tonight. I hope you, you get to meet her, uh, Christina Grabowski. Uh, Christina asked when she understood what the school is about, I wonder what we could do in selecting students that might be a bit different. And Christina was so engaged in this that uh, we became the first beta site from the Association of American Medical Colleges to engage in holistic review. Christina has since gone on to teach holistic review at institutions such as the University of Chicago and the University of Washington a new paradigm that others strive to emulate. Uh, Christina, I am told, was uh, told to us as one of the five rising superstars in medical school admissions from someone from the Association of American Medical Colleges. You take uh, another one of our dean's group, Angela Nuzzarello, Dr. Nuzzarello, who had been at Northwestern for about 15 years, who wondered what medical student support systems could look like and how student wellness could play out. And from that wondering comes something that Chris didn't mention but is also kind of innovative, very innovative, called our PRISM program, which is a course that teaches students how to take good care of themselves so that they can take good care of patients. It goes well beyond that, a lot of reflective writing and a lot of personal development. And then we take another of our associate deans, Dr. Linda Gillum, whom I should mention tonight, was honored last month uh, at the 25th anniversary of the Michigan Women's Foundation. And Linda, we're very proud of you for your many achievements, including this one. And Linda wonders how we can engage faculty and stimulate them, because we have an enormous challenge. It's not only the faculty based on the Oakland campus, it's engaging all of those Beaumont physicians who are out there and who want to in interact with the medical school. So Linda, together with a lot of the Beaumont staff and a lot of us, put together something the medical students have probably never heard of, something called meaningful participation. It's a play on the words of meaningful use dealing with the electronic medical record. And there are a number of physicians here tonight who have worked hundreds and hundreds of hours on it, Dr. Roche, Dr. Forst, and others to put this together. Real simple, what does this do? At the same time that it engages Beaumont physicians in medical education, and Chris has already talked about those 17 cardiologists and more, there are now 1,500 Beaumont physicians on the faculty of this medical school, and part of that program contributes to improved access to health care by those who are least able to afford it, and it does it all in one step. There are other people who did a lot of wondering in curriculum, our late associate dean for medical education, Dr. Michelle Rabel, Dr. Noiva, who succeeded her in this uh, role, dealing with a really novel and unique curriculum. So what does this all mean? Well, our students not only get engaged, the school is engaged at every level. We have something called the Center for Com Community Engagement called COMPASS. Why was it named COMPASS? Because a COMPASS is a tool that helps you find your direction. And at the same time, it's also the first seven letters of the word compassion. So it, social activism is very much important to our medical school. 
Do you know that 92% of this class has participated in voluntary community service work? And I did the total of it up to this date, 663 hours of voluntary community service work by this charter class so far. And the interesting thing, I'll give you one example. Every year, there is a very important ceremony at Oakland University, Keeper of the Dream, to commemorate Martin Luther King Day, the dream. Our students didn't go to the lecture. They partnered with Forgotten Harvest. That's an interesting thing. I wonder what that was all about. Forgotten Harvest, local food reclamation service. Feeding America, a major organization associated with hunger in the United States, based out of Chicago, has lots of research. 25% of people living in Wayne County do not know where their next meal is coming from. In Oakland County, it's anywhere around 16 to 18%, and it's in zip codes other than Pontiac. It's all over the place. Our students ask the following questions. If you don't have enough food to eat, do you have access to health care? So on Martin Luther King Day, they took buses. Part of the class was in the east side of Detroit in a very poor neighborhood in a church. The other part of the class was in Warren. And when clients of Forgotten Harvest were there to pick up their food, our students were there administering up to 200 flu shots that had been donated by Beaumont to people who otherwise wouldn't have access to that care. Screening for diabetes, yes, and on that day they picked up people with blood sugars over 400. Body mass index screenings. Hypertension screenings. It's, it's a school in motion, serving the community. The school is a community, it serves the community. A number of us asked the question, how can we engage with the community to improve the community? There are certain communities here that have not contributed one physician to the profession of medicine for so many generations. So, thanks to Dr. Gillum and others on her staff, we partnered with the Cranbrook Educational Community. Cranbrook has the country's oldest, perhaps best funded private Horizons Upward Bound program in the United States to create something called the Beaumont Future Medical Scholars uh, Society. These are high school students nominated by their teachers for scholastic aptitude in the sciences who also show an interest in medicine. They get to shadow Beaumont physicians. And last month, eight of our medical students met with them on a Saturday, giving up their Saturday morning, so that they could meet medical students and participate with them. And in about a week or so, on a, on a Saturday, there's going to be a pinning ceremony, and the next generation of Beaumont Future Scholars is going to come in. And that program is so successful. It has now been copied uh, with our help to make a new program that will start this June with the Chaldean American community dealing with Chaldean refugees from Iraq. And it doesn't stop there because there's a new partnership with Central La Familia in Pontiac with the Hispanic community. Our students are engaged. Our students don't know this yet, but we have yet another new program that I shared with Dr. Rossi that I'm going to talk about tonight, something very unique. One of the things that I'm very proud about with Oakland University is its athletic program, but not necessarily the wins and losses. If you take a look at it, it is one of the premier programs in the United States in fostering the student athlete with an emphasis on the student, the graduation rates and the GPAs. We will be partnering with Oakland's athletic department in several interesting ways. When their student athletes are out in the community teaching reading skills to students from these underserved communities, we're going to offer the opportunity for our medical students to team ta tag team with athletes to go out there. These kids look up to athletes. Let them look up also to physicians in training as other ways of broadening their horizons. There are a number of student athletes who are pre-med. Our community inside the medical school has started a new program which we will call Docs and Jocks, pairing student athletes at Oakland University with medical students to see if there's an upward bound program for them as well. Does this sound very conventional to you all? Okay. Uh, remember, it was designed not to be that way. It was designed to be different. And part of the challenge that I have as a dean when I get out there, beyond the public service announcements, they're not commercials, they're public service announcements, is to explain this because remember, when you're doing something that's different, that's not conventional, it may take a little bit of time to get your head wrapped around this, but once you understand this, you understand the passion, you understand the good it can do, 
then you get a grasp of what we're trying to do here and what we've already accomplished. Let me tell you a little bit about our faculty, because you want evidence, our faculty. Last month at the Central Group for Educational Affairs meeting, our faculty, brand new school and not a large faculty, presented three workshops, 10 posters. Mr. Morris Cavanaugh and Dr. Nelia Afonso. Dr. Afonso is in the audience. She's very, very modest. You can stand if you want to, Nelia, but if not, that's okay too. Dr. Afonso won an award with Mr. Cavanaugh, Innovations in Medical Education Award for a program that the medical students know. It was the program about the flu immunizations and learning basically about how compliance with humanizations can be done in such a way as to teach the students in a learning setting, a very, very novel program. Our curriculum has been recognized in a variety of interesting ways, but some things that you may not know about. Do you know that other new medical schools come to us and ask to see our curriculum? One dean of a legacy medical school here in the Midwest asked to see our curriculum. On July 4th, I'll be overseas introducing our curriculum to a university that wishes to start a four-year medical school, and they want to know how we are doing it. We have a couple international affiliations. I won't go into that right now, but I want to tell you how others look at us. One of these international affiliations has only three U.S. partnerships. MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Johns Hopkins University, and Washington University in St. Louis and Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. That's pretty good company. Another one of our international partners has four other partnerships. Albert Einstein in New York, Mount Sinai in New York, Boston University, UCLA, and now the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. There must be something there that's special that's getting that recognition. And finally, I should tell you what happened last November, which was really surprising to us. The Association of American Medical Colleges is our umbrella organization. The CEO and president of that group, Dr. Darrell Kirch, was the white coat ceremony speaker for this charter class. So in a symposium at the national meeting where he gets to give his talk before more than 4,000 medical educators from around the country and actually from around the world, he talked, and listen to the title of the talk, about New standards of excellence in medical education. New paradigms, new standard. And he gave four examples of medical schools that met that new standard. And although we had only been teaching for several months, one of those new medical schools was us, the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. So here's my hard, here's my challenge. What we are trying to do, as Chris pointed out to you, is create something really new. Because there would be absolutely no point in copying that which already exists. If it exists and it's there, it's excellent. Why create a carbon copy? If it's out there and it's not doing exactly what we want, why emulate it? Why not do something special? And I truly hope that you see the value of what we are doing here. Now, the final pitch, taking it home. You know, it's a privilege for me to walk away from a research lab because after all, 20, 30 years from now, that paper cited 500 times, I'm gonna be cited once. The science will improve, it'll be replaced by something better. I still practice pathology at Beaumont and I can help a limited number of patients but only a finite number of patients. I can get in a classroom and I can teach. I teach all over the world, thankfully, but still I only hit a few generations of students. But if you start a new medical school and you build into that the type of commitment that you see, the culture that Chris talked about, and what this class is going to do because they have already made the commitment of transmitting this culture from one generation to the next. They're prepared to teach this to the next class that comes in. So what do you have a chance to do? You see, those of us who are on the staff get this opportunity to do this building. The students who are in the first couple of classes, especially this charter class, have a profound impact on everything that happens thereafter. Why is it important? 
because what we do here in the first couple years of this school's existence sets into motion an institution that has the ability to influence the life of everyone who will ever train as a physician at this medical school for generations to come, and through them, the lives of every patient who will ever be treated by a student who attends the school. Do you understand, please, the passion behind the impact of what we are doing now? And if you do, may I offer to every one of you, to your colleagues, your friends, the community, the opportunity to acquire a share in the legacy of this school. Because your support for this school now helps to put in motion, sustain in motion, all that you have heard about from the students, all that you have heard about from us, and the impact is so great that as one student told me, you know, I suspect in about a generation, someone will be able to point to a physician and say, by the way you practice medicine, you must have trained at the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. I hope that this has given you an opportunity to understand a little bit more, as President Rossi, Mr. Michalski has said, what we have accomplished in the, in the first year, what we hope to accomplish down the road, and I hope that my heartfelt invitation for you to share in the legacy of this school is something that you will consider. I'd like to thank Dr. Rossi, Mr. Michalski, all the staff of the two foundations who came together to put this evening together. Thank you all for coming. Please be our ambassadors. And may I invite you into the foyer for dessert. You can mingle, mix the students, meet our faculty, talk to me, enjoy the evening. I'm so grateful to you all. Thank you so much.